Hello everyone, Happy New Year's. Welcome back to Far East Wargaming. We are so happy to bring you our very first bat rep of the year. We took a little bit of break off during the holidays because I think everybody was doing different things and I had business travel and people unfortunately got sick. And this is the reason why we've been gone for probably about four weeks in terms of bat reps, but we are very happy to bring you our first one in the new year. And I'm also very happy to welcome back Paul to the channel. Thank you very much. Happy Always New Year. to be back. Yeah. Likewise, Happy New Year to you. Hope you had a good holiday. Oh. Yep, can't complain. It was good to chill for a little bit, and I'll be back to the action. Good. Yeah, absolutely. We're very excited not only to come back and get a game in, but we're also bringing you our very first game of the year on the Lava Terrain, which is one of our favorites. Again, this is the amazing terrain that comes from Scrapscapes KL. Pato does an amazing job of putting this together, and it looks absolutely fabulous. I think you'll agree. We're playing a very customized mission today, right? So we're playing Tide of Carnage. But what we're doing is we're embracing the shorter game length. Now, I got to admit, I don't actually like the four-turn games. I don't. I think they favor some legions over others. Mm. And that's not the fault of the legions. It's their legion rules. So what we're actually doing is we're taking the Tide of Carnage mission, but we're making it a five-turn game with the option for a sixth turn. Mm. So it'll be a sixth turn <laughs> on a four-up. We're also playing a very weird points value, which is 3,100 points. And the reason why we're playing 3,100 points is because our Alpha Legion army is a little bit limited in terms of the units that we can choose. And to make sure that we can get a nice looking army on the table, we bumped it up just a little bit to, to make sure that the Alpha Legion could go ahead and play. The deployment is going to be Vanguard, Vanguard Strike. Strike. That's right. Yep. Yep. Vanguard Strike. And we've already rolled off to see who gets first. And it's going to be the Emperor's Children. But we are very excited to bring you this content. We're really, really looking forward to the bat rep, and I promise you, you're going to enjoy it, and we will get back to the action soon. Here we have 3,100 points of Traitor Empress Children running the third company elite right of war. This force is led by Lord Commander Eidolon, for the second HQ, we have a Centurion Chaplain. He uses a Power Axe as his Crozius Arcanum, and he is equipped with Sonic Shriekers and a Warhawk Jump Pack. For the third HQ slot, we have a Master of Signals Centurion, upgraded with a Subsonic Pulsar. For the first elite slot, we have a three-man Apothecarian Detachment. All have been upgraded with Artificer Armor, and two of them have been upgraded with Warhawk Jump Packs. For the second elite slot, we have a ten-man Palantine Blade Aquila Squad. Six, including the Sergeant, have been upgraded with Phoenix Power Spears. Four have been upgraded with Phoenix Rapiers. The Sergeant also has been upgraded with Melter Bombs and Sonic Shriekers. For the first troop slot, we have a 15-man Assault Squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor, Melter Bombs, and Sonic Shrieker, and is wielding a Phoenix Power Spear. One of the Assault Squad has been upgraded with a Power Axe, and two have been upgraded with Power Swords. For the second troop slot, we have a 10-man Cacophony Squad. The Orchestrator has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and Sonic Shriekers. For the third troop slot, we have a 10-man Tactical Squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and Subsonic Pulsar and is wielding a Phoenix Power Spear. The squad is riding in a Rhino Dedicated Transport upgraded with Dozer Blades. For the fourth troop slot, we have another 10-man tactical squad. For this squad, the Sergeant is upgraded with Artificer Armor and Subsonic Pulsars. They are also riding in a Rhino Dedicated Transport upgraded with Dozer Blades. For Fast Attack, we start with a two-strong Javelin Squadron. 
Both Javelins are using Cyclone missile launchers and Pintle mounted multi melters. For the second fast attack, we have a three man Sky Hunter squadron, all upgraded with multi melter. The Sergeant is upgraded with Artificer Armor and Subsonic Pulsar. And one of the Legion's Sky Hunters is upgraded with a Nuncio Vox. For heavy support, we start with a Legion Derrideo Dreadnought. This is equipped with Hellfire Plasma Cannonade and Alios Missile Launcher. For the second heavy support, we have a single Scorpius. For the final heavy support and rounding off this army, we have a seven-man Sun Killer squad. The Novator is upgraded with Artificer Armor, Augury Scanner, and Subsonic Pulsars. This rounds up 3,100 points of Traitor Emperor's Children running the 3rd Company Elite Rite of War. Here we have 3,100 points of Loyalist Alpha Legion running the Headhunter Leviathol Right of War. The Warlord and leading this force is Armilus Dynat. For the second HQ, we have an Alpha Legion Exodus. For elites, we start with a Contemptor Dreadnought Talon. There are two Dreadnoughts, both running Gravis Power Fists with inbuilt Graviton Guns and Kerry's Assault Cannons. For the second elite, we have a five-man Lernaean Terminator Squad, all wielding Power Fists. For the third elite, and the reward of treachery unit for the Alpha Legion, is a five-man Fire Drake Terminator squad with Dragon Scale shields and Thunder Hammers. For troops, we start with a nine-man Headhunter kill team. The Headhunter Prime is upgraded with Artificer armor. Eight of the headhunters, including the Prime, have been upgraded with combi plasma guns. One has been upgraded with a heavy bolter. For the second troop slot, we have a 10-man tactical squad. The sergeant has been upgraded with artificer armor and combi plasma, as well as a power dagger and power fist. One of the Legionnaires has been upgraded with a Legion Vexilla. For the third troop slot, we have another 10-man tactical squad. The Sergeant has once again been upgraded with Artificer Armor, Combi Plasma, and Power Dagger with Power Fist. One of the Legionnaires has also been upgraded with a Legion Vexilla. For fast attack, we start with another nine-man Headhunter kill team. The Headhunter Prime has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and Power Fist. The entire unit has been upgraded with Combi Melter Guns. The second fast attack is a Javelin Landspeeder Squadron with two Javelin Landspeeders. Both are equipped with Cyclone Missile Launchers and Pintle Mounted multi melters they also are both equipped with two hunter killer missiles each the final fast attack is a three-man sky hunter squadron the sergeant has been upgraded with artifice armor and power dagger the entire unit has been upgraded with plasma cannons for heavy supports we start with a five-man heavy support squad Upgraded with Laz Cannons. The Sergeant is upgraded with Artificer Armor. 
one of the legionnaires is upgraded with an augury scanner and another is upgraded with a legion vexilla the final heavy support is a leviathan dreadnought with cyclonic meltalance and leviathan siege claw with two twin linked volkite calibers this rounds up 3100 points of loyalist alpha legion running the headhunter leviathan right of war today's battlefield the forces will be fighting on our lava terrain we've mixed in a few structures here to give a bit of variety but we have plenty of line of sight blocking and vantage points it should be a very interesting game all right empress children are deployed over here uh, starting on the right hand flank we have a squad of cacophony they also have a apothecary with artificer armor. They also have the master of signal attached to them. Behind them is a tactical squad. Um, nothing really special with them. Up on the elevated position, we have the squad of seven sun killers. Um, they also have an augury scanner. Behind that, we have the friend maker, the Scorpius, of course. Um, panning over here, we have the uh, plasma Dorito, um, otherwise standard outfit. We have a squad of assault marines. They also are joined by an apothecary with artificer armor as well as a chaplain. Uh, behind that, we have a squad of jet bikes. They have multi melters as well as a non seal box. Then we have a unit of two javelins with multi melters um, as well as the uh, missile launchers. Another attack squad in a rhino. Um, and then my HQ, uh, my warlord, uh, which is Eidolon together with a squad of 10 Palatine Blades is deep striking. For the Alpha Legion, of course, we've got shenanigans going on. Starting on my right hand flank is an infiltrating headhunter squad. This is the one with the combi Meltas. Coming over here into this corner to kind of shut it down from any vehicles or anybody coming in on this side. Moving further towards the middle, we have the Leviathan as well as the Contemptor Talon. The reason why I placed them here is they pretty much have no line of sight from the Sun Killers, which is going to be protecting them for at least the first couple of turns, hopefully. But they can also choose to go either straight up the middle or onto my flank. Next to them, we have a tactical squad. So I only have a limited amount of line in this army, so I've got to be very, very smart with my scoring units. And this line is over here, this tactical squad, ready to make a move in any direction as needed. Here on top of the Imperial building, we have the five-man heavy support squad with LAS cannons. Uh, also took advantage of the positioning to make sure they couldn't be seen by the Sun Killers and then spread out a bit in case the Derrideo decides to drop a pie plate on them. Hiding here behind the building is actually the Sky Hunters with the Plasma Cannons. Uh, being able to take advantage of their movement, they should be able to get into range even with night fighting later on, but we don't know which direction we want them to go. Up here, perched in his little hideout, is Exodus, the one of many. He's ready to shoot at something. Uh, this position actually not only gives him really good line of sight, but it's also far enough away from the Sun Killers where they actually can't shoot back if he shoots a sniper rifle. Down here we have Dynat with his Loyalist Alpha Legion Reward of Treachery unit of Salamander Fire Drakes. He's sticking back over here because with Eidolon and his buddies potentially deep striking into my zone, we want to be able to react to that if necessary. Coming over here to my left flank, we have two more infiltrating units. One of them is the Headhunters with the Combi Plasmas. And then the Lernaean squad is right next to him. Now, the reason why the Lernaeans could actually infiltrate over here is because of Dynat's uh, Warlord trait. So I want to reinforce this flank, and I have a scoring unit over here to do it. And then finally, we have my last unit on the board, which is the other tactical squad, which was chosen to infiltrate with Dynat's rule as well. I'm sticking them over here in the corner so that they can make a late game move to either take the middle or potentially Paul's deployment zone. The last thing I have in my army is actually the Javelin Squadron, the two Javelins here. I've elected to actually have them Deep Strike because I might be able to get a chance to kill that Scorpius if I get lucky, or at least Paul think a little bit about uh, what he wants to do to react to them. So right now, the Emperor's Children have turn one, but there is still a seize to do. But before we do that, we have to do the obligatory fist bump. Good luck, Paul. Good game, sir. 
Now it is night fighting, but I am going to also attempt to seize the initiative. I would love to get this off because I have a lot of short range weapons. Let's see what happens. It's a four. All right. Nope. We'll be back with EC in just a moment. So turn one movement phase for the Emperor's Children. Almost everything has moved, just mainly shuffled around a little bit to gain line of sight on some of the Elf Legion units that are obviously very well hidden, as you guys saw. So the Javelins have just moved to the side here so that they can at least get off a few pot shots on that unit of Headhunters that's hidden back there. Um, likewise, the jet bikes have moved up into this mountain. My guy with the Nunciavox, unfortunately, he kind of like hit himself while flying up there and lost a wound. Um, behind the rock, the Rhino has just driven around the rock to hide from any incoming Melta, carries whatever is coming from that side. Um, next to it, we have the Assault Squad. They just shuffled forward a bit. Likewise, the Deradio just moved around a little bit. Um, so here, this is more about like gaining position, I think, for the future turns. Um, behind them, up on the rock, the Sun Killers, five of them stood still, two moved around to gain line of sight to one of the back contemptors there. Um, behind that, the Scorpius, that's still in place, didn't move at all. And then lastly, all the way on the right hand side of my flank here, the Cacophony has moved forward a little bit, most critically here, the Master of Signal moved up so that there is line of sight on the Alpha Legion units that are hidden behind that rock. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for the Emperor's Children movement phase. All right, shooting phase, somewhat mixed results. One flank went okay, the other flank, which is this flank, pretty much did nothing. So over here, the Scorpius, as well as the Cacophony, um, shot at the Lernians. Um, the Scorpius actually managed to score a direct hit hitting all the Lernians and four of the Headhunters, but did not kill or do a single wound. Likewise, the Cacophony, only four guys were able to see of the Cacophony, but still did not manage to cause a single wound. So this flank, I would say, um, not exactly a gleaming success. The other side was a little bit better. So up on the other flank, we had the Sun Killers, basically shot the um, front contemptor of that cluster of dreadnoughts on the other side. And that was okay. I think I took off two wounds with that. Um, and then the Doradio took off another wound of that contemptor, so he's down to half. Um, could have done a little bit more. Probably the most successful element of my shooting was the um, jet bikes as well as the javelins that managed to basically wipe half of the squad of the headhunters that were hidden there in the corner. It's kind of like thanks to their mobility that I was able to move them around. They moved 14 and 16 inches respectively, so still able to, despite Jason's good efforts to hide them, uh, snipe out half the squad there. Unfortunately, did not manage to break them, so they'll be able to come around now and shoot back at me. Um, overall, I would say somewhat mixed turn one. I would have definitely liked to do a little bit more on the other hand flank, but this flank went okay. Turn one movement for the Alpha Legion. We weathered the storm of firepower from the Emperor's Children pretty good, although losing half of one of the Headhunter squads was a little bit painful. Starting with that headhunter squad on my right flank, we just elected to go ahead and move up here onto the rocks. Uh, unfortunately, because of the difficult terrain, we wouldn't be able to get into range with any of the combi uh, meltas, unfortunately. So they're just gonna go there, fire the bolter part and the one combi plasma on the sergeant. All of my walkers have moved up, putting themselves in a position to have multiple target choices, whether it's the jet bikes, the Derradeo, or the land speeders with some of the weaponry. The tactical squad that was bravely hiding and defending this rock over here still continues to bravely hide and defend this rock. There's no reason to step out and eat a bunch of Derradeo plasma. Las Cannon's perfectly good where they're at. They've got a lot of choices on what they can shoot at, uh, and with the augury scanner, they have the range to do so. I moved up the jet bikes from behind cover, seeking to get an angle on the cacophony, and two of the jet bikes were going to be in range to be able to drop some nice little plasma templates on that bunch. Exodus, of course, doesn't need to move because he's just so good at shooting things from far away. The Warlord Dynat and his retinue of Loyalist Rewards of Treason 
fire drakes. They've elected to stay still because honestly, we don't know where Eidolon might come in and we do need to be able to react with it. The other headhunter squad here was looking at a few different choices of firing off their plasmas, but any of the choices that they would have made would have probably got them within assault range of the assault squad. So they elected just to stay where they're at. The Lernaeans popped out around the corner wanting to get into range with at least to shoot their, uh, their Volkites, but unfortunately they got just close enough to the Cacophony squad to allow it to react. And Paul wisely pulled it back now out of range of my jet bike. So my jet bike's gonna be left hanging here in the middle. Very nice play by Paul. And then the last unit is the tax squad back here in the corner. They're going to do what they need to do, which is just stay alive and make a late game push somewhere uh, as needed. We'll be back with shooting in just a moment. Shooting for the Alpha Legion, we started out with the depleted headhunter squad. We fired at the jet bikes uh, in range of our bolters and the combi plasma and did absolutely nothing. Not even the single wound that we needed just to kill one guy. The Leviathan was much more successful. So he was in range of the jet bikes and he unloaded with his Volkites and with his Cyclonic Melta Lance and just the Volkites in his chest were enough to kill two of the bikes. They did, however, pass their check and did not flee, but that is one Nuncio Vox that is gone, which is very helpful. Both of the Contemptors elected to fire at the Derrideo. The one in the back fired first, the Derrideo reacted. He took two wounds off of his opponent and he only suffered one wound in return from the return fire, so that was a good result. The guy in the front was not so lucky. He fired everything into the Derrideo, did absolutely nothing. Even the grab in his fist scattered off and did absolutely nothing when it hit the uh, assault squad. Attack squad here, no shots because they elected to hide. The Laz Cannon squad here, I had some decisions. I could have targeted the Derrideo. I could have targeted a lot of things. I elected to shoot at the Rhino all the way over on the other side of the board because the Cacophony were nice enough to cluster around it. They were able to score four penetrating hits in one glance, and even after the cover saves, they were still able to blow up the Rhino, and in the explosion, they killed four of the occupants and two of the Cacophony. So that was a really, really good result with the last cannons. I'm very happy with that. The Plasma Cannon bikes, their original target, the Cacophony, had fled out of uh, range, reacting smartly in Paul's turn, or excuse me, in my turn to my movement. Instead, they went ahead and shot over at the Derrideo. Uh, they were able to actually clip the Derrideo and a couple of the assault squad through being on target as well as scattering. They did nothing to the Derrideo, but they did kill two of the assault squad, so that was very, very helpful. And we now have also some dangerous terrain over there from the various grabs. Exodus apparently was not living up to his name or he was a new recruit to the cause because he managed to roll a one to hit. And even with Ballista Skill 6 allowing him to try to get a six, he didn't hit anything which is a shame because I really wanted him to snipe and force pinning perhaps on the Sun Killers. The last thing in my army that was able to shoot this turn was the Lernaeans that came around the corner. They fired into the Cacophony. Three guys were in range. They did score a lot of hits and a lot of wounds, but unfortunately they didn't do any damage because Paul was able to tank it on his Master of Signals Artificer armor. And just for the record, we've been playing the SNN Battle Reports rules where Artificer Armor upgrades, you can only target, a, or excuse me, you can only tank a maximum up to your initiative. Um, but because the Master of Signals gets the two up native, he can tank as many as he wants. So yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag over here. Um, we have the explosion. The explosion did kill a bunch of guys as described just a minute ago, four inside the Rhino, two of the Cacophony. Unfortunately, nobody was pinned, and unfortunately, we didn't wound or pin the uh, Sun Killers, which would have been really, really nice. I would have loved to have been able to kill off the Jet Bikes or kill off the Derrideo on top of that, but hey, I can't be greedy. Uh, not bad. I did do more damage, I think, than my opponent, and we'll see what happens in turn two. Empress Children, turn two movement phase. Um, quite eventful, I want to say. Uh, first things first, um, Eidolon and his... Um, Palantine Blades did decide to come in um, and I, I, it was not easy to really find a good spot for them. Um, the Alpha Legion has quite a bit of Interceptor plus the last cannons are well positioned, the Exodus is well positioned so it wasn't really a great spot for me to come down but I decided to go down on that flank. I think they are more needed there. Um, so coming down they managed to pin the tax squad but then they did have to eat a little bit of Interceptor. Yeah, so there was the free Interceptor reaction from the Augury Scanner on the Laz Cannon Squad, and the free Interceptor reaction from Exodus. So I fired Exodus first, and he did what he needed to do, which was to take his shot that has Brutal 2. He took a single shot, and he was able to draw a line of sight to the Apothecary that came down with the Palantine Blades. And 
thankfully the brutal two because the apothecary actually rolled a five and a six and he had a six up cover save. So Exodus sniped there, no pinning. The last cannons reacted as well from the interceptor. They fired in, they managed to kill two more of the Palantine blades. And then for my free movement phase reaction, I elected to use the jet bikes, the Sky Hunters and their plasma cannons, thinking, hey, what could go wrong? Well, here's what went wrong. We didn't really do anything to the Palantine blades because Eidolon tanked all the wounds that went through. But as you can see here, there's four dead TAC Marines because one of the plasma templates scattered directly onto this nice little bunched up group of guys and managed to kill four of his own number. But hey, that's the Alpha Legion way. Um, they were pinned from the deep strike in. Uh, yeah, it wasn't ideal because that's only one of my three scoring units, but it happens. I'll trade the Apothecary and the uh, the Palantine Blades for that. Yep, in terms of other movement, most things shuffled up and moved around a little bit. Um, the Javelins just moved into a 22-inch range on the back Headhunters so that they can still pop up some shots. The lone jet bike is standing still at risk of dying actually if he moves because he only has one wound left and is in that dangerous terrain. Um, other than that, the back tax squad that just managed to stay on the board passing their leadership check last turn on an eight, thanks to the leadership bonus of the Master of Signal, they ran back, they're just gonna, um, excuse my language, haul ass to not get killed at the front line. Their sole objective will be now to secure my three points for holding my own uh, deployment zone. The Assault Squad, I was thinking for a couple minutes whether I should throw them against the Front Contemptor, um, but decided ultimately that I will not make that move, seeing that they would probably kill the Contemptor, but then will be countercharged by the Leviathan, and I think uh, worthwhile for me to keep that scoring unit alive, given that I only have three scoring units. Um, the, the radio only moved slightly, hiding behind that rock, so he can't get shot by the last cannons next turn. Um, and then last thing that moved is the cacophony. They just shuffle around a little bit so that they can all get line of sight on the Lernians. Shooting phase, um, starting off over here, both the javelins as well as the lone last jet bike with one wound. Shot at the remaining four headhunters over there. I managed to kill three and the last guy broke and run. Um, not off the board yet, but I think likely next turn he might be assuming he continues to run. Then looking at the blob of dreadnoughts there, one is missing. Um, thanks to my the radio, uh, managed to take off the remaining three wounds. Um, so pretty happy with that. Um, other than that, around there, panning over to where the uh, jet bikes used to be, those are also a uh, smoldering wreck now. Have Sad been face. Taken care of by the sun killers. Um, yep, so overall pretty successful, but we still have one more thing over here. Um, the Cacophony tried to shoot the Lernians, which were right in their face. But now they are somewhere else. So uh, thanks to good old Alpha Legion shenanigans of fire and fading, they managed to hide behind that rock. And now my um, Cacophony shooting was wasted. The Scorpius decided to try his luck with a pot shot at the back tactical squad there, but that scattered off the board and did nothing. All right, Empress Children Assault Phase. I was a little bit torn between throwing the Palatine Blades into the last cannons or that tax squad, but in the end I decided to go for the last cannons because even if I eat the tax squad, probably I'm going to get shot with the last cannons the subsequent turn and the tax squad is pinned, so decided to go after last cans. I did lose two Palatine Blades to Overwatch uh, on the way in, but yeah, that was meant to, that was expected, so uh, it is what it is. King off turn two for the Alpha Legion. The first thing was is that we had some deep striking javelins to come in. I wanted to bring them in over here because there just wasn't a lot of good options to try and go after this uh, Scorpius or anything else, and I want to be able to kill Eidolon because I get a bonus for killing the HQ. They did deviate a little bit here, which did bring them into line of sight of the Sun Killers, unfortunately, but we got incredibly lucky from their intercept reaction. We only took three wounds, which means both Javelins are still alive. Eidolon and his sissy boy escort, they decided to run away as a reaction as well, coming down off the building and coming onto this side, which was probably pretty smart because it protects them from the shooting of the Javelins. 
Coming over to my right flank, the very next thing was to attempt to rally the last remaining member of this headhunter squad. He did rally. He's going to try and be a hero and snap shoot that last wound off of the jet bike. We'll see what happens in just a moment. I had decisions over here. I was, con I was con contemplating the contemptor to go after Eidolon and his boys. But after pre-measuring, there was no way he could get into charge range. And so he's just going to keep going and threatening the Derrideo and the assault squad because that's a scoring unit. The Leviathan, however, changed gears because he can come around the corner and get that Cyclonic melt lance working and popping off on those Palantine blades. So he's come around the corner over here. The attack squad here is still pinned from the deep strike that happened in the Emperor's Children turn two. Over on this side of the board, the Lernaeans have decided to come around that rock. And the reason why is there was no more movement reactions from the Emperor's Children. And now I give myself options of multiple targets to go and charge. The other headhunter squad, which is still at full strength with the combi plaz and the heavy bolter, they've come around the rock and they're probably going to end up shooting at the cacophony. The tack squad over here decided to spread out just a little bit because being bunched up with that Scorpius pie plate, eventually it's going to come in on target and that would be bad news. And then finally, the command, or not the command squad, but the Rewards of Treason, Fire Drakes, and Dynat. They were originally going to move towards Eidolon and his boys, but once they moved down off the building, there was no reason for them to move. So they just kept hugging the cover and making sure they're not getting shot by Sun Killers. And of course, Exodus is just going to stay where he's at in preparation for sniping somebody. Shooting for the Alpha Legion was a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the lone guy that rallied over here had a single snapshot attempting to be a hero and kill the jet bike but no he missed which is pretty much what i expected the contemptor here that uh, is threatening the assault squad fired into the assault squad uh, he did manage to kill two of them with his carries which was pretty nice but he did also take himself out of charge range which is not nice the leviathan was a superstar he came around the corner and did what i needed him to do which was pump melta into the palatine blades and as you can see over here there's three of them that are dead, and that's a very, very good thing. The tack squad here that was pinned just fired off some snapshots into the same target, doing absolutely nothing. Exodus was very interesting. He had decisions to make. He could actually see Eidolon, and he activated the Assault 3 version of his weapon. And he fired all three shots into Eidolon, hoping to be a hero and take him out. He did manage to actually hit twice, but he only snuck one wound through. However, that squad is now pinned because Eidolon failed the leadership check, and because it's still night fighting in turn two, he rolled a 10, minus one nine, and that is a pin squad, and that is actually huge. Um, the Javelins over here, they unfortunately don't have any targets whatsoever, so they're just kind of stuck there in the wind. The only other shooting that took place was actually the Headhunters over here. Uh, thanks to precision shots from their weapons, there was only five guys with their combi weapons and the heavy bolter that could see the cacophony. But they were successful in actually using precision shots on the breaching combi plasmas to take out the apothecary and then the remaining shots took out another one of the cacophony as well. Uh, the master signals actually passed a lot of saves there on some of the other shots that were not precision strikes. Well actually no, it was all precision strikes because I needed four ups to hit anyhow. Uh, there was a decision to be made about the Lernaeans because they had different opportunities but I was afraid if I shot them I was going to either get return fired by a Daredeo or Sun Killers or Cacophony, or I was going to accidentally kill the Assault Squad guys who I really need to charge because I don't want to get charged by them. So we elected actually not to shoot anything in the hopes that we can get into an assault in just a moment, and I'm sure that the Emperor's Children are going to activate their advanced reaction. But we'll be back to see what happens. This is kind of going back and forth, and the whole Eidolon situation over here is pretty tasty. So kicking off the assault phase for the Alpha Legion, we elected to try and charge with the Lernaeans into the assault squad because we knew we'd get charged anyhow. Paul activated his advanced reaction and this was the result. I rolled a four, he rolled a seven, and he actually successfully charged me. But in some ways it actually helped my cause because he was so strung out so far away that it limited the number of his models that could actually get into engagement range. And since he was striking before me, I actually wouldn't pile in, increasing the number of his models in engagement range. So, the net result of the combat is, Paul swung first with all of his higher initiative. He did kill one of the Lernaeans. In return, our fists managed to smack down four of the assault marines. Thanks to the chaplain's stubborn ten, they held on a roll of an eight. So we're going to continue the combat into the next turn. 
Um, I got really lucky there, actually, to be honest with you, uh, because of the limited number of models that made it into engagement range. And the rerolls for the chaplain will no longer be in effect in the next round of combat either. So Neither the Sonic Shriekers. This is pretty, yeah, either not the Sonic Shriekers either. So this is actually really spi uh, spicy because mm -hmm. this is two line units actually mm -hmm. piled into each other. So mm -hmm. we will see what happens with the Emperor's Children in just a moment. Kicking off Emperor's Children, turn three with the movement phase now. Um, a lot of thinking to do now that Eidolon squad has been pinned. That is quite unfortunate. So I have to really think about where I want to shuffle things around now. Um, overall, quite a strategic game. Uh, so yeah, let's start over on this flank. The lone jet bike, as well as the javelins, just shuffle around a bit to get line of sight on the last contemptor there. That contemptor movement reacted toward the javelins with the intention to get out of line of sight of the sun killers, which he did. Um, but I, th I think that's okay to me. Um, I, I think I still have an okay chance to either kill it or at least bring it down to like one or two wounds this turn. Um, my Rhino started to move forward. That will be critical toward the end of the game to kind of like score an objective for me. So I need to start moving it up. Um, the Deradio didn't move. The Assault Squad obviously engaged. The Sun Killers also did not move. Um, over here, the Cacophony, they just single file lined up um, so that they can take some shots at those last few uh, headhunters there. Uh, staying out of 12, not to be reacted against. And that's pretty much it for uh, Empress Children movement phase. Shooting phase. Um, as expected, everything here shot the Contemptor. Did not manage to kill it, but it is down to his last wound. So um, it's okay. He can still do one more round of shooting, which is a little bit unfortunate. But so one wound it means that he would likely die to whatever he would get return fired from. Over on this side, the Sun Killers um, managed to kill off the Javelins. Did lose two guys to the return fire, but I, I think that's a worth, worthwhile trade. Um, and then the last thing shooting, the Cacophony did quite well and managed to kill off all the six members of this Headhunter squad over here that they were able to see. And the last two guys decided to haul, haul it and are now running uh, for their lives. So very, very, overall pretty okay, I think. Um, still very unfortunate that Eidolon and his squad are pinned, but uh, as far as things go, I think that's an okay result for the uh, shooting phase. All right, well, this combat over here, you know, Empress children being cocky as they are, they thought no issue to kill those Lernians, right? And now how does it look like? There is a lot more purple guys on the floor than there are blue guys. Um, the thing is with Empress Children, obviously, if you don't kill a unit in the turn you charge, where you have your Sonic Shriekers, you have your initiative bonus, you get your bonus attack, the Chaplain activates his reroll, they're actually pretty basic. And so here is the result. I did manage to kill one Lernian, but I lost four Assault Marines in return. The squad is still there, though they held thanks to uh, the stubborn leadership of the Chaplain. The turn three movement phase was very short for the Alpha Legion. There was only a couple units that were moving. I didn't move this lone guy over here, the last of the headhunters, because he's going to attempt to charge and finish off that bike, but he'll probably die from Overwatch. We'll see what happens. I did move aggressively with my last contemptor. He's down to his last wound. Uh, Paul decided to go ahead and react to that by moving away with the Rhino. I moved with the Leviathan over here to come around the corner because since there was no more movement reactions to worry about, I now have open season on Eidolon and his boys seeking to add that skull to the tally for the HQ kill for the Rite of War. And other than that, there was absolutely no other movement other than the last two members of the Combi Plasma uh, Headhunter Squad, excuse me. They did rally at the beginning of the turn and they just used their consolidate move to tuck into the terrain. That was it. Nothing else was moving because anything that moves out is probably going to get shot by Plasma or Scorpius or all of the above. So I do have some shooting opportunities here. We want to get Eidolon's head. We'll see what happens in the shooting phase in just a moment. Shooting for the Alpha Legion was uh, not so good. So we started over here with the lone headhunter. He decided to try and take that last wound again off the jet bike. And of course, he was not successful. Teased out, no reaction either. 
The contemptor here in the middle shot at the rhino, and you would figure that a carries assault cannon and a grav would be enough to blow up the rhino, but the rhino had popped smoke and managed to pass a lot of saves and only took two hull points, and the guys inside did not fail their pinning check from the penetrating hit. The tag squad here shot first, even though they're inferior to the legion range, did absolutely nothing to Eidolon's unit, including with a combi plasma. The Leviathan, you would think that all of his weaponry and melted guns would be able to finish these guys off. Paul elected to uh, evade, and thanks to some amazing rolls, nobody over here died. And that was after getting hit with five hits from Melta, but only two wounded. Exodus, again, using his assault, three weapon, only stripped one wound off of Eidolon, so Eidolon is still alive. And then there was nothing else to shoot because I just don't have much on the table anymore that has any long-range shooting. Uh, we will come back to the assault phase in just a moment. There is a couple key assaults that are happening in this turn, uh, and we will see what transpires. The assault phase for the Alpha Legion was actually fairly successful. So this guy comes in, he, was ma he managed to somehow survive. He didn't get overwatched and he punched this guy to death and finally ended his torment. We'll see what happens in just a moment, but hey, that could count for attrition, so that's pretty helpful. The Contemptor charged in against the Rhino and you would think that only needing one hull point on four attacks, he'd be able to blow it up, but sadly he didn't blow it up. He did destroy it and the tacticals got out but I would have loved to have that thing explode, but unfortunately that didn't happen. The Lernaeans, for some reason, decided that this was the turn they wanted to hit and wound with everything. <laughs> they didn't miss a single swing. They didn't fail to wound a single swing. And they completely wiped out the rest of the assault squad and the chaplain, which is actually a bad thing because I wanted that to stick. Because if it sticks, then that saves me from another turn of fire from the, uh, the various things that the Emperor's children are probably gonna shoot at him in just a minute. But on the plus side, we did get rid of a line unit, uh, which is pretty helpful. We'll see what happens in turn four for the Emperor's Children. Turn four, Emperor's Children movement phase. So at this point, not a whole lot moving anymore. Um, this entire flank actually stood still. Um, I think I'm pretty okay with the positioning there. The only thing that actually moved was over on the other flank, which is the Javelins pushed around. Basically, my intention there was to um, move them in such a way that I would still be able to A, um, kill, kill something over here while not being out of line of sight of the sole guy at the back there. Um, and then I brought over Eidolon squad. Their only objective now is to kill that tech squad, and then probably they're going to get killed by the Leviathan in return, but it is a trade-off now I think I have to make. EC shooting phase. This was quite an interesting one. So the... Uh, the radio managed to kill off the Contemptor. Contemptor explosion, however... Was five inches and engulfed eight or seven, I think, of the TAC Marines, of which five failed their saves, mm -hmm. uh, wiping out half the squad, but luckily you didn't break. That's right. Fortunately, just didn't break thanks to being able to use the Massive Signals leadership, actually. Otherwise, they would have broken. Um, so quite a clutch one. Then the last cannons obviously unloaded off on those guys. Only managed to kill two, though. The sergeant was left with full wounds. Um, subsequently, he was blasted by the entire squad of Kofni, who caused 14 wounds and only managed to remove one. So what did the job? Faithful Tacticals managed to just cause six wounds, which knocked out the sergeant's last legs. So overall, pretty well. I think everything's been cleaned up here. The javelins, then, they were kind of my... Um, what do you call it, reserve in case everything else here didn't, didn't manage to kill those units. So they just ended up picking off the last guy there at the back. Um, <clears throat> another interesting one, finally, the Scorpius being out of line of sight did manage to score a direct hit on Jason's last scoring unit now. Maybe after this turn, it might be the last scoring unit. Yeah, it was my tax. <laughs> uh... Yeah, you got a nice little hit finally with the Scorpius. It killed four of my guys, but thankfully I paid for a Vexilla and they stopped from running off the table because they failed the break check. So very clutch one now. Um, Eidolon's charge is up next. As expected, Empress Children Assault Face here. We managed to wipe out that squad. Um, the Spears initially killed, I think, three and then Eidolon managed to wipe off the rest. So that's very clutch for me, even though 
I mean, I think it's pretty given now I'm going to lose Eidolon and that squad, but at least I managed to wipe off one of the scoring units there. When you don't have a lot of models on the table, your turn goes really fast. So turn four for the Alpha Legion, there was only really two things to move. The Leviathan moved around over here, hoping to actually tease a reaction out of Eidolon, but also giving him the option to shoot at the tactical marines in the middle. Should Eidolon fall to Exodus and his sniper rifle? The only other movement in the phase was the tax squad over here that was running. Even though they had the Vexilla, they were just stopped on the edge, but they've now rallied and they've gone back into their hiding spot. I'm intentionally putting them in a position where for the final <coughs> turn of the game, I can make a choice whether to go into my zone or to go into the enemy or go into the mid ground. Nobody else moved because again, anybody else that moves is going to end up getting shot by the superior firepower of the Emperor's children. We'll be back in just a minute for an equally short shooting phase. Shooting for the uh, Alpha Legion, just like the movement, it was short and sweet. So Exodus took his time, he took his aim, he only needs to take one wound off of Eidolon. He hits with his brutal two single shot and Eidolon manages to roll a five and a six for his invuln and is still standing there like the arrogant bastard he is. The Leviathan, so he wanted to go in and get into the fun as well and you would think with all of his weapons for a second complete turn he'd be able to kill that squad, but alas no. There's only one dead. So it's going to come up to the combat phase in just a moment to see if we can polish off Eidolon and his boys. It's not looking too good for the Alpha Legion, but if we can kill Eidolon, we have a shot at this. We really do have a shot at this because that's a bonus two points, thanks to my Rite of War. Assault phase for the Alpha Legion, and man, did it actually go very, very well. So the Leviathan charged in, scored two hits with Hammer of Wrath at strength eight, and Paul rolled Snake Eyes killing these two Palantine Blades and leaving Eidolon standing alone. I needed sixes to hit, and I managed to get three sixes, but then when it was time to wound, I rolled two ones, which means Paul only had to pass a brutal three in order to make it, but alas, it was not meant to be, and Eidolon was smashed down finally. After all of that, we finally got the kill, we finally got the HQ head that we were looking for, and that's a bonus two points for the Alpha Legion. But it's going to come down really to the last turn. It's going to be pretty sneaky to see what can be done because right now it looks like two zones to the Emperor's Children to one for the Alpha Legion. Uh, but things can change in this last turn. We'll see what happens. Emperor's Children, turn five, movement phase. Not a whole lot left on the board, so there was just a little bit of shuffling around to do. Um, the Cacophony moved around a bit, but they don't really have much to see. The tax squad just moving here behind this rock to hide um, the javelins. They are now somewhat exposed in front of the Leviathan there, but I wanted, really wanted to draw a line of sight on his last scoring unit here, the tax squad at the back. So it, it might be futile in hindsight and a kind of like throw away of them, but if they can, if I can kill that squad, then I think it's pretty much game for me. So um, probably still a worth, worth kind of trade to make here. Shooting phase, the Sun Killers, they really only had one target, which is the Leviathan, and they took off, what was it? One two, wound, wounds? two wounds. Two okay, wounds. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, then the Javelins finished off the last two Headhunters there, and the De Radio actually managed to wipe out the entirety of the last tech squad. So, no more scoring units on the Alpha Legion side now. Yeah, that was a big one for me. They almost made it, actually. They weathered a lot of firepower. I used an Evade or Shroud reaction. Uh, but alas, it was not to be, and the squad did get wiped, unfortunately. But I do still have a path, possibly to a draw, maybe even a win, depending on if we have a turn six. Turn five movement for the Alpha Legion, and I got to play just in case that we have a six turn. Uh, really, the only movement I had when you have eight models on the table is actually really short. Leviathan slid over to his left because he still can draw a line of sight to the remainder of that tax squad in the middle that Paul has. Paul did react to try and put Derradeos and things like that in the way to try and block line of sight. It's going to give them a cover save, and of course they can still shroud after that too. But we got to take whatever we can get in this particular situation. Uh, the only other movement was for the Fire Drakes and Dynat to just adjust their movement a little bit so that the Derradeos and the Javelins couldn't shoot them as easy. And then that's it. We'll be back with shooting in just a moment. There'll be two quick rounds. For the Alpha Legion, they're shooting, it's short and sweet, only two units could shoot, so Exodus was the first guy. He did what he does, which is he snipes 
the sergeants of the tax squad, hoping to lower their leadership and also ho hoping to actually pin them, but alas, it was not meant to be. He did kill the sergeant, but he didn't pin the unit. That left it up to the Leviathan. So the Leviathan opened up with his chest Volkites. He managed to kill two more of the TAC Marines. The Deflagrate, unfortunately, didn't kill anybody else. That was all that I could actually see. I could only see three of those TAC Marines. Now, it did force a break check, and thanks once again to the Master of Signals, the hero all game, I think, for the Emperor's Children. The TAC squad held on, but I guess it's going to come down to see if there's a turn six or not. Mm -hmm. Paul, would you like to do the honors? I think it's on a four up. We're going to have a turn six. I, I will do the honors. So, one, two, three for the Emperor. There is a turn six. There is a turn six. Uh oh. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Last turn, Emperor's Children, turn six. So, the last two TAC Marines are now valiantly hiding behind a rock. Um, valiant as they would be. The Cacophony just has moved up a little bit so that they can also take some shots at the Leviathan. The Sun Killers moved down, so at least three of them can snap fire. And that's pretty much all the movement. Everything else stood still. Shooting phase. Um, the Leviathan withstood quite a bit of damage here. It only took two wounds from both the Javelins, the the radio, the sun killers, the three who are snapshotting, as well as the cacophony, and the scorpius shooting at him. So it's still there. Um, I, I had a return fire as well, and I killed one of your javelins with the return fire. That's right. Man, that was an intense match. What did you think? That was a very interesting game. Very back and forth. I think there were a lot of really clutch moments uh, from some units getting pinned to others just getting wiped off entirely in one turn. So. Yep, very good game, very back and forth, and I think still, despite not much Alpha Legion left at the end, still a pretty close game after all. Yeah, I was actually pretty surprised. Um, what was really cool is unintentionally we both kind of brought a Centurion-type list with not too mm -hmm. many tanks. That's actually a good point, yeah. Yeah, we had lots of infantry in the match, we had uh, lots of walkers, we had mm -hmm. jet bikes, we had a lot of things that you typically don't see people taking. That's actually true, yeah. But it made for a really fun game, and you're mm -hmm. absolutely right, it just kept going back and forth the whole time. Very much so, yeah. I think... Uh, the Alpha Legion, again, this is the studio army that we have available to us. There's actually more on the way. Um, if I could, I probably would have tweaked a couple of things, but I'm not blaming that for the, the way the match went at all, because actually the match was incredibly fun. Mm. Uh, and I liked the fact that we were able to take a standardized mission, and we were able to kind of tweak it a little bit to yep. go into a shorter time frame, but it was still really good in my opinion. No, 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 of course I agree. I think yeah, it made, made total sense to kind of like at the last turn as optional. Mm. I think that actually adds a strategic element because sometimes you're then in a situation where it's like, if the game ends now, I would win, but if there is another turn that might turn around, so it actually, you have another kind of like direction of thinking that you need to include in your gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't say enough about that game. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was the first game back after a layoff, as we said in the introduction, um, but it just felt like we kind of slid right back into things. And, after and a layoff? After a layoff or a time okay. off or okay. uh, whatever terminology you want to you want to use, no, I didn't lose my job. Nobody <laughs> lost their job. Uh, but after some time off away from the game for the holidays, yeah, it was really good. I think to uh, to catch up with you again and to get in the match. So thank you Always. for that. Always a good game. Yep. What do you think was your favorite moment of the match? Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. My favorite moment of the match. Um, I think my favorite moment of the match would probably have to be. Just the last turn when um, I think it was very clutch that my tactical squad did not start running. And yeah. I think it was the third time in this game that the Master Signal delivered on um, boosting another squad's leadership. In this case, it was the last two TAC Marines that ended up passing that leadership check. Yep. I think before that, it was the Sun Killers. I think it was another attack squad that benefited off his um, boosted leadership. So... Yeah, hence, uh, clearly, this is my man of the match. I think he totally delivered. I totally agree as well. That guy was definitely pulling his weight. He was making your uh, your cacophony ballistic mm -hmm. skill five. That's right. He was stopping things from running away. And honestly, a couple of those tax squads, if they had run off, mm -mm. that was game over. Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. For me, my favorite part of the match was actually something that is new in 2.0, which is the way that explosions work. <laughs> All right. So my last cannons blew up a rhino and managed to cause mass casualties, mm. mass casualties, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm. I sent one of my contemptors on a suicide mission to get close to your tax squad. 
blew up, killed yep. half your tax squad. Yep, that's right. So it's kind of fun. I like that. Uh, that's how the game goes. No, I actually I agree. I, that like explosions are a lot more deadly. Yep. Dangerous terrain is a lot more deadly. Mm -hmm. um, and so adding in these kind of like not just shooting can kill stuff. It makes uh, for a bit of variety and spice in the game. Yeah, agree, agree. And I think for me, for my man of the match, it's going to be Exodus. This is actually the first time that I've ever played with Exodus. I didn't play with him in 1.0 after we got a hold of the army, and this is my first time in 2.0. Guy's a beast. Uh, aside from the first turn, where for some reason he decided to shoot a water gun, every single turn he was actually killing mm. something important, whether Very it was true. whether Very it true. was a sergeant or a, an apothecary yep. or putting a wound on Eidolon. Very true. Uh, he's really, really good. He is expensive for the points, even though he's only a, basically a console. He's a console that costs like 185 points. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I think he's worth it. So, yeah, definitely my man of the match. Nope, makes sense. Are you going to... This is a, not the new um, Exodus model, is it? It's not, no. So this was converted by the very talented painter by the name of Jason Lakova Jones mm -hmm. in the UK. Some of you may actually recognize from our previous bat reps or actually from the models themselves. Mm. This army used to be on the 30K channel. So when I had an opportunity to pick it up for our channel, I was excited to do so. It's... It's a nice conversion. He does a lot of different conversion work and a lot of really, really beautiful paint jobs, and we're very happy to have it. I agree. A very beautiful army and quite unique for Alpha Legion. You know, I think you see a lot of the kind of like metallic blue. I quite actually like this. It's very much like a 40K painting style with the very sharp contrast, edge highlighting, but yes. it looks great, especially with the snow contrast. Absolutely. And actually, the color scheme, what really I love about it is it comes from John Blanche. So if you actually go back to the original Chaos Space Marine artwork that he did for all of the Trader Legions, mm -hmm. it was this color of blue-green. It was not the metallic that's painted now, and I really, really enjoy it. So agree with you on that. Yep. For the new year, in addition to this bat rep, we're very excited for the new content that's coming. I know we talk about it a lot, but I promise you it's on the way. Just to give you a little bit of taste, we have a Studio Thousand Suns army that is in progress right now that hopefully will be coming back quite soon. We have additions coming for the Alpha Legion. We also have other armies that are being worked on by the various channel members. And we're also working on Legions Imperialis. We actually wanted to film Legions this weekend, but unfortunately we couldn't get it all done in time. And we're also having a shortage of terrain in Malaysia. The retail stores are all sold out, unfortunately. Legions is proving to be really, really popular here, which is good to see. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? What's, no, what's next in the queue for you? Um, I think there's still a few more uh, units of the Emperor's Children that I do want to add on. Right now, on my t painting table, I have a Contemptor, a Castaferum, and actually also a Xiphon. Oh, nice. So, some just to add a, add a bit of flavor to this army, um, I originally played the Emperor's Children with quite a lot of vehicles, so now changing it up a little bit to make it a more infantry and walker, including maybe flyer kind of based army. I also picked up a Cryptus, so nice. that will be a fun addition as well, I think. Uh, change it up, add some units that at least here in Malaysia, I feel like you don't see that often. Yep. yep. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. Paul's a really good painter. You've seen his Imperial Fist and also the Emperor's Children are really, really nice. For those of you that have been here this far with us, we want to thank you. Welcome back again for the New Year's for our first Bat Rep on Far East Wargaming. Stay tuned, like, subscribe, keep leaving those comments, keep in, uh, engaging with us. It really, really does matter a lot to us, right? We answer every single comment, I promise you. We actually take the time to give you feedback. If you have questions about these armies, if you have mm. questions about us, future of the channel, anything at all, you can always leave it in the comments. So like, subscribe, and do all those different kinds of things. Any other last comments from your end? Um, well, Alpha Legion stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, that hurt my heart. Well, we were actually the loyalists that game, so uh, actually I guess it hurt the Emperor's heart. But that's going to wrap it up for now. Thank you again for joining us on the first Bat Rep in 2024. We're looking forward to seeing you on the next one. We'll catch you then. Thank you.